So now I'm inviting uh, Remy and Amina up to the front. We're going to have a conversation uh, with our clients. Yes, there you are. Hi. So, yes, please. So good evening. Good evening. How are you both? Uh, how are you tonight? I'm good. Yes. We're very good. We're very excited to be here. Good. A bit nervous as well. <laughs> so we're privileged to have uh, Remy Men Mendez, a client from the Philippines, yes. along with her daughter, Amina, who is Corporate Giving Officer for Opportunity in the Philippines. So, may I ask you a few questions? Yes, okay. So, um, talk with us about how you first learned of Opportunity International. More than 10 years ago, uh, life is so difficult for us. Uh, we just earn a living by doing some job in the farm and the uh, I just earn two dollars a day, planting, weeding, harvesting, and the, even picking up scraps in the farm. I have two children, and uh, that is not enough. Two dollars is not enough to provide our basic needs. Uh, I have uh, this convenient store, but it was then closed. My Father got sick, then hospitalized and uh, dead. So we have to solve the piece of land that we have. My husband is uh, driving a motorcycle, called that motorcycle taxi. And he is also earning $2 a day and half of the income goes to gasoline because our motorcycle then before was so old. So I have to search and uh, I have to put up business to provide uh, the needs of my children. I have to cook rice cakes. I have to make ice candies, ice candies and sell. But still, the income is not enough. So I have I've tried to seek for another business. And uh, that was the time that I heard of, uh, about Opportunity International from the, what do you call that, the project officer that's coming in and visiting our village. And I said, I have to take the loan. I have to have that loan so that I can start my business. And uh, our, my initial loan was then $5,115. And uh, I used that the, uh, amount to buy three piglets, and uh, I started my piggery. So that's it. Thank you. <clears throat> How many loans have you received from Opportunity? Yes, I have already received uh, around uh, or more or less 20 loan cycles for uh, the past 10 years. Wow. Wow. Yes. And what, what have you used the loans for? Yes, I used the loan uh, to improve my piggery because uh, I invested on my own sow because before I'm just buying my piglets. Uh, but then, because I have already invested on my sow, I, have, I, I don't have to buy piglets. And also, I widened up my piggery. Uh, we put up our own water pump as our source of water. We have also uh, this pressurized water wash machine. I have also bought a second-hand sewing machine. And uh, 
we also improve the walls of our house. But because it was, uh, before it was just a bare hollow blocks. Right. It's, it's a bit smoother now. I can see that. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, uh, the, the best thing that uh, I invested was the education of my children. Mm. The, uh, uh, we've prov provided them the books, the vitamins, everything they needed to the school. And uh, also because I have already the, the, this capital, I also put up my business, so I stopped going to the farm. Right. Because I have already, uh, what, how should I say it? I have already my business. I sell Avon products. I sell rice because we have also rented a piece of farm, rice farm. So I have to sell rice. Uh, I sew hats, and also I sell them. Right. Uh, what else? There are so many things I've invested with Sounds that like loan. you're very, very busy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, you're very busy. <laughs> yes. So um, share with us, if you will, how opportunity has changed your life. Yes. Uh, before uh, life was, I can compare my life before as the life of a chicken. Uh, we have this Filipino saying, isang kahig, isang tuka, which means we have to work for our food just for this day without knowing we, that we have something to eat for tomorrow. And uh, how is that? Um, uh, I have uh, put already my business. Daughter, come change, come, <laughs> come help me. <laughs> yes, because it was, it is the first time that I sit on this cr crowd. <laughs> it's okay, it's a very friendly crowd, yes. with one or two exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, uh, so, tell us about how um, how you're helping, how we are able to help other people now, which yes. wasn't possible before. Yes. Uh, now, because um, I can say that we are not in hungry anymore, because uh, our house is already full of gold. My daughters. I mean, I's already a graduate, and uh, my se the second one, Rina, is all, uh, will be graduating this coming April with her course in teaching. So I can say that we will not be in hungry anymore. Um, yes. We are uh, we're still poor. We're not coming rich, but we're also starting to help other people. Uh, we've been uh, helping uh, my niece in going to school, and also uh, we've been uh, during Amina's birthday. Ever since uh, she was uh, accepted or granted the scholarship, then we've uh, been celebrating her birthdays in the school. And we've been feeding around 200 school children. Wow. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, Amina, um, talk to us about what the impact has been with opportunity on your life. Going back to the many years of um, experience we've had of with Opportunity International, I would say there were three major impacts in my family and my life. Uh, one, it changed our then-present 
Um, I thought uh, Opportunity International is just another name and a long list of creditors that we have. And believe me, that's a long list. Um, but then when my mom started putting up business, I knew something was up. One of my earliest memories would be at evening waiting for our dad to come home from a uh, tricycle, the motor taxi, and um, waiting for dinner because we couldn't cook. We were waiting for the half kilo of rice that he's going to bring home. My mom would be leaving before sunrise and would be getting back long after sunset, working in the farm uh, under heavy rains or whatever it is, hot sun or heavy rain, um, doing all she could, and that's all for $2. And I remember thinking, should it be that, that hard? Um, her nails then were all dead because of uh, working in the field. But then I knew something was up with the loan when she uh, put up her piggery and she didn't have to go anymore. Um, we were pretty young by then, but it was different for us because she was at home. Before she would be too tired after you know, a day in the field to, to talk about classes and to help us with projects. But then we, she had all these kinds of business. She, she had her garden. And then we would be doing homeworks and projects at home. And when my dad um, goes back for lunch, she will be there with him preparing food. And we would have dinner where we actually have conversation instead of being too tired to talk about things. So it changed my present then. But even better, it changed my possible future. Um, in the Philippines, it's a big thing, especially for poor families, to have education for children. My parents were always telling me they won't be giving us you know, lands or titles as inheritance. They, they would probably give us um, some debt, leftover debt. But the best thing they could give us would be a diploma. Most of poor parents see it as the only way their children doesn't have to go through the same hardships they've had. And, and that's, that's, that's the sort of promise my parents gave to me and my sister. They've always told us, you will have the best education we could provide. When many parents in our village are pulling out their children from school so they could work in the farm, they, did not, they never did that. They never even considered it. We do not know where we would get food for dinner or the next day, but we were going to classes to the best school they could possibly send us to. When I was in high school, I was attending the best science high school in the province. And that's on an income of a farmer, laborer, and a motor taxi driver. After I graduated from high school, um, I had very high ambitions. I knew exactly where I wanted to go the university where I wanted to go to, the course I wanted to take, I was deeply in love with mathematics, and I wanted to do it. Um, my choice of university was then in Manila, so one of the premier universities in the Philippines. But even with the income from the piggery and the other all sorts of things that my mom is doing, we sat down that summer. I've already passed the entrance examination, and all my, all my other classmates are going off to their choice universities. But when my mom and I talked about it, um, she told me that even if, half joking, but also truth, even if I sell them both, <laughs> my dad and my mom, even if I sell them off, I, we would, it wouldn't be enough to pay for college. And um, for the, the parents, you know how children can be selfish and, 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 and narrow-minded. And I remember thinking, um, why? Why, why, why would God put dreams in my heart and not put a way to it? It was especially hard because my other classmates were going off to their dream school, and I knew I was as good as them. But I know it was also hard to my mom because all she wanted was you know, to give us the best education. And it was at this point that um, the scholarship with Helen and Gordon Smith came in, and that's, that's how I first understood how grace works. They've never seen me before, and they've never heard me cry out. And, and, and I didn't know um, anything beyond Opportunity International giving alone. But then suddenly, I had, I had an opportunity, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go to the University of My Dreams. To cut the long story short, I was attending college in my dream university with my dream course. I was there for two years. But 
you know how sometimes um, you have dreams and you think that God will not provide a way to it, but when he actually does grant the dreams, the way he grants it is an even bigger way than I have ever imagined because two years after I was in the United States, I finished my schooling here, something I've never even dreamed before. I never thought possible. I remember in one of the field trips we had to New York, I remember standing in the middle of Times Square and thinking, I'm a farmer's daughter. I'm a, tra I'm, I'm a tricycle uh, driver's daughter, and I'm in Times Square. And, and then suddenly, the phrase they say that the world is your oyster, it, it meant something to me. I understood it. <laughs> because it's like, I can do things. The future has opened up to me and to my family. That changed the future for us. But I think the best thing, the best impact um, we've had in, my, in our family and myself as well is it gave us a higher purpose. When we are worried what we would be put, putting on the table, if it's just day-to-day -day survival, it's hard to look beyond our need to other people's need. But growing up the way I did, I, I, I know that there, it's not just my mom who was laboring so much for so little. There are hundreds of thousands and even millions of clients. And it's not just me who wanted to get education badly, but who wasn't able to because of circumstances that are out of our control. And because I've gone through that, I know what it feels like. And I know I have to do something. We were talking about um, gifts and being able to use it. And, 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 and I, I realized that the reason why I was given a scholarship out of so many possible children, the reason why I was able to graduate, the reason why I have to experience all of this is because I need to do my work as well. I, 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 they say it's, it's, I decided to go back to the Philippines to work for Opportunity International. Others think of it as a debt of gratitude or paying back, but then how can we pay back Helen and Gordon Smith? How can we pay back Opportunity International? So I'd rather think of it as paying forward, making sure that the opportunities and chances given to my mom and given to myself are open to other people, making sure that it doesn't stop with us. And with that higher purpose, kind of get, it, it, it comes with that higher sense of satisfaction, higher sense of significance, that won't be possible if we're just looking at what we'd be eat tonight, what we'd be eating tonight. And I think that's one of the biggest gifts the experience has given us, and Opportunity International has given us. Yeah. So this is your family. <laughs> it's a pretty good looking family, as families go. Um, but these are people in the audience that really love you and are supporting you. Is there anything else you'd like to share with them tonight? Yes. Uh, first, I would like to thank the Opportunity International for supporting us and giving us a chance, giving chance to poor people like us. And uh, I would like to thank, no, we're open, we are really uh, determined and we have the will to go out from poverty, but what we need is the opportunity and the, the Opportunity International gave us the chance so thank you. And uh, in behalf of all Filipino clients, thank you very much. And also I would like to thank 
Miss Helen Smith, and uh, Sir Gordon Smith for making Amina's dream possible. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, it's, I have been the daughter of a client, and now I'm an implementer on the ground. And it's a great opportunity to be here, looking at it from the other side. I guess the most amazing thing about the whole Opportunity International Framework and our experience is that you have never met every one of our clients. You've met a few of them, but you've, you've never seen them. You are helping people you've never seen before. And for me, that was quite amazing. Helen and Gordon, they don't know me and they don't know my family, but they've opened their hearts. You don't know my mom. She started 10 years ago, but you've opened her, your hearts for her. And so when, when um, and, and, and that, that shows the kind of grace that's sometimes hard to understand when you're poor. So when a friend from college started sharing to me about Christianity and Jesus Christ's sacrifice and the nature of grace, I said, I understand that because I've seen it, because I've experienced it. But more than that, I've also seen how that grace sort of translates to others. My mom has started helping. I'm making sure I'm, 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 that other clients and other children are having the same access. I, we have, I've seen a client up north in Belair. She hasn't paid her loan yet but she's sending out of school children, out of school children to school. When poor people like my mom and like myself um, sees that we are able to do it, we are able to change our destiny, we start thinking maybe others can do it too. And we start sharing that hope and we start sharing, uh, helping other people. We were the whole day talking about momentum and 2.2 million households and 2.2 million families. But really, it's not just 2.2 million. The loan helped my mom. It helped me. It's going to help generations after me. It has helped the neighbors in her community. So it's not just momentum. It's an explosion of momentum with one life touching another. So. You have no idea how many lives you are touching and inspiring, directly or indirectly. And I would like to thank you for that. It's great to see the faces of the people who have invested so much. And I want to be able to say to you that you are creating change and that you are creating impact. And what you are doing here matters. Not just to the, to the families who are receiving the loan, but to their children, the children after that who may never know the name of Opportunity International because they won't be poor anymore and they won't be needing that loan anymore. So, Helen and Gordon, where are you? <laughs> there you are, my eyes. So, and I see you, Bruce. I want to thank, first and foremost, you all and your family. And then, Remy and Amina, thank you all for sharing your story with us. Love and appreciate you all very, very much. Thank you. 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 I think we're